Hey everyone, today we are looking into the life of Consuelo Vanderbilt, an American heiress and socialite from the incredibly wealthy Vanderbilt family. Nevertheless, her life would change dramatically in 1895, when at just 18 years of age, her mother coerced her into marrying an English nobleman. This was not a love match, but rather one about riches and noble titles. Join me as we explore her story. Consuelo Vanderbilt was born in New York City on the 2nd of March 1877. Her father was William Kissam Vanderbilt, a scion of one of America's wealthiest families of the Gilded Age. Vanderbilt was a railway executive, one who famously renamed the P.T. Barnum Great Roman Hippodrome in New York as Madison Square Garden in 1879, two years after Consuelo was born. Her mother was Alva Erskine Smith, a future leader of the American suffragist movement. Consuelo was named after her godmother, her mother's closest friend, Consuelo Iznaga, who was half Cuban. Despite being born into an extremely affluent family, Consuelo's upbringing was less than ideal, especially by modern standards. Growing up, she was required to wear a steel rod along her back to ensure that she had the straightest possible posture. Her mother imposed this and was a generally domineering figure, one who dictated what Consuelo wore and was not shy of using physical punishment if Consuelo disobeyed her. Also, her childhood was pretty isolated, as she was homeschooled by a series of private tutors and teachers. One must understand the wider family dynamic in order to comprehend how Consuelo's life played out in the ensuing decades. She was born into the Vanderbilt family, one of the richest and most powerful families in Gilded Age America, who owed their wealth to Consuelo's great-grandfather, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Cornelius had built his first fortune in the 1830s and 1840s by becoming the most significant figure in the shipping and transport industry in New York City and along the Hudson River. He used the money he made from these ventures to diversify into the railroad industry, laying down tens of thousands of kilometers of railway lines across the United States in the 1850s and 1860s. By the 1870s, shortly before his death, he was believed to have become the richest man in the world, though these things were harder to quantify in the 19th century than they are today. Consuelo's grandfather Cornelius' son, William Henry Vanderbilt, inherited most of the Vanderbilt fortune when his father died in 1877, but William died just a few years later in 1885, and thereafter, the Vanderbilt fortune was divided out amongst an ever-growing number of family members. Yet the primary beneficiaries of William's will were Cornelius Vanderbilt II, Consuelo's uncle, and her father, who inherited somewhere in the region of $55 million, a sum equivalent to nearly $2 billion in today's money. Thus, Consuelo was born into a family of immense wealth. Unfortunately, that wealth would serve as much to shape her life negatively as it did positively. From the beginning of her teenage years, there was already speculation as to who Consuelo might marry. She was, after all, a daughter of one of the richest men in the world, and a marriage to her would bring enormous riches to any potential husband. Her mother was intensely aware of this, and was determined that Consuelo would enter into a high-status marriage. Moreover, as she became a young woman, it was evident that the Vanderbilt heiress was not just immensely rich, but also very attractive. J.M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, once joked of her, I would stand all day in the street to see Consuelo get into her carriage. By the time she entered her late teens, Consuelo's mother seems to have determined that her daughter would marry into the British aristocracy. She was not alone in this. As many American families became immensely wealthy in the second half of the 19th century, they used their daughters as what became known as dollar princesses, whereby a rich American heiress married a British aristocrat. New money in America joined with old world nobility in these unions. Yet, there was another reason for Alva's insistence. In March 1895, Alva had divorced her husband William Vanderbilt and as a result, 
had been exiled from high society. Desperate to regain her social standing, Alva needed Consuelo to marry a noble of very high standing, and luckily for her, there was an ideal candidate for such a union. This was Charles Spencer Churchill, the 9th Duke of Marlborough. Marlborough was a descendant of one of the most acclaimed noble families of Britain, the first duke having led the British war effort during the War of Spanish Succession in the early 18th century. Back then he had built one of Britain's grandest estates, known as Blenheim Palace. However, the Spencer Churchills had fallen into some economic distress by the late 19th century, despite the great honour of their household. Thus, the match between the 9th Duke and Consuelo was a marriage of convenience. Marlborough would obtain the funding he needed to, as he later claimed, save Blenheim Palace, while the Vanderbilts would buy their way into the British aristocracy, and Alva would regain her social standing. Nevertheless, Consuelo did not enter into the marriage willingly. When it was first brought up by her mother Alva, she had already become secretly engaged to Winthrop Rutherford, a socialite of the era who was significantly older than Consuelo. But Consuelo was completely intimidated and beholden to her mother's wishes in her youth, and despite having no interest in marrying Spencer Churchill, she agreed to the union at her mother's behest. Apparently, what tipped her into doing this was when her mother emotionally blackmailed her by claiming that her health was deteriorating dramatically, owing to Consuelo's unwillingness to agree to the marriage. The marriage was formalised on the 6th of November 1895, when Consuelo was just 18 years of age. Apparently, as she stood at the altar, she was weeping under her veil. As part of the arrangement, Marlborough received two and a half million dollars worth of Vanderbilt railway stock, a sum equivalent to nearly 100 million dollars today. But while the union was enormously beneficial for the Spencer Churchills from a financial perspective, it was a disaster from a personal viewpoint. Both Consuelo and Charles had to abandon relationships they had been in as a result of the marriage, and they did not take well to one another. Indeed, Alva Vanderbilt Consuelo's mother freely admitted in later years that she forced her daughter to marry Marlborough. Both Consuelo and Charles quickly became involved with other people. She entered a relationship with Reginald Fellows, a cousin of Marlborough's. While the Duke took to an American socialite by the name of Gladys Marie Deacon as his mistress. By 1906, the Duke and his wife had effectively separated, though they remained officially married until the 1920s. Despite the unhappy nature of the marriage, it did result in two children. John Albert was born on the 18th of September 1897. He would become the 10th Duke of Marlborough in 1934. A second boy, Ivor, followed just a year after John on the 14th of October 1898. Ivor served with a distinction in France during the First World War and was awarded the French Legion of Honour. Despite the inauspicuous nature of her marriage to the Duke of Marlborough, Consuelo was adored by the servants and staff at Blenheim Palace and the wider Oxfordshire region in which it was situated. In the 1890s and 1900s, she was perceived as a likeable and compassionate face of the Spencer Churchill lineage and gave generously to local maternity hospitals and charities focused on the poor. Nevertheless, Consuelo had married Marlborough at a time of increasing tensions in Europe's politics. The great powers had been locked in a bitter rivalry since the 1870s, driven by nationalist sentiment, a scramble for colonial possessions in Africa and Asia, and tensions between powers like Britain and Germany. By the early 20th century, two major armed alliances had developed across the continent, and in 1914, a regional crisis in the Balkans exploded into the First World War. Consuelo quickly involved herself in philanthropic and charitable work to aid the war effort in her adopted home. On the 5th of August 1914, just days after the outbreak of the war, she, along with Lou Hoover, the wife of the future US President Herbert Hoover, and Lady Randolph Churchill, established the American Women's War Relief Fund, an expatriate organisation of American women designed to help fund and aid the war efforts in Britain. Over the next several years, Consuelo, through the American Women's War Relief Fund, 
was involved in fundraising from America to aid Britain. That is until the United States joined the war on Britain and France's side in 1917. The fund also used the money it had collected to finance knitting factories and workshops, and even equipped a military hospital. By the end of the war, what was termed the American Women's War Hospital had treated over 7,000 wounded soldiers. Consuelo and Charles eventually formalised their divorce in 1921. By then, Consuelo had long been involved in a relationship with Jax Balsan. Balsan was a pioneer of aviation who had started working with balloons around the turn of the century, but who had then moved on to building airplanes after working with the Wright brothers, the first men to fly an airplane at Kitty Hawk in 1903. He and Consuelo had been involved with each other for many years prior to her obtaining the long-awaited divorce from Marlborough, and no sooner had this been finalised than Consuelo and Jacques married on the 4th of July 1921. He was 52, and she was 44. Consuelo's second marriage was a very happy one. In an autobiography which she had ghostwritten in the early 1950s, Consuelo referred to her time with Balsan as gold. They lived primarily in Paris in the 1920s and 1930s, and only barely escaped from the French capital in the face of the advancing Nazis in the summer of 1940, fleeing to Spain and then Portugal before heading to the United States. They settled in Florida thereafter, living out the remainder of their lives in America. Much of the later years of Consuelo and Jacques' marriage were lived in Manalapan, a small community in Palm Beach County in Florida. Here, she and her second husband constructed a large mansion which was named Casa Alva, after Consuelo's mother. Built on an 150-acre estate, the house spanned 26,000 square feet, and when sold in the 1950s, was valued at $568,000, a sum equivalent to millions in today's money. Casa Alva has its own place in modern history. In 1946, Consuelo's cousin-in-law from her first marriage, the former British Prime Minister and wartime leader Winston Churchill, stayed here on his way to give a speech at Westminster College in Missouri. Thus, he is believed to have polished and practiced his famous Iron Curtain speech at Consuelo's home, one wherein he infamously described Soviet rule in Eastern and Central Europe as being like an Iron Curtain descending across the middle of Europe. Consuelo and Jack spent much of their later marriages in Florida, while also maintaining residences in New York and Long Island. In 1953, Consuelo's autobiography, which was ghostwritten by Stuart Preston, an American art critic and writer, appeared. Entitled The Glitter and the Gold, it provided an entertaining if highly selective account of her life and the world of a Gilded Age heiress. Jacques died on the 4th of November 1956 in New York City. His body was returned to France and buried in Paris. Sadly, her younger son Ivor died in September 1956 before reaching his 60th year, just weeks before Jacques. Following their passing, Consuelo sold Casa Alva and largely resided in New York and Long Island thereafter. Consuelo died at her home in Southampton on Long Island on the 6th of December 1964, at 87 years of age. Her body was returned to England, and she was buried at St. Martin's Church at Bladen in Oxfordshire, not far from Blenheim Palace, next to her deceased son Ivor. Much of her fortune descended to her surviving son, the 10th Duke of Marlborough. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video on Consuelo Vanderbilt, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life down in the comments, and if you have any other suggestions, also leave them in the comments. I also want to say I've recently opened an Amazon store, so be sure to check that out in the links in the description. And I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.